Hello everyone. I am getting on to talk about parent, dating being a single parent. You know, it's very hard to understand why people want to bring their children around somebody they just met. Especially if they can't speak verbally, any concerns or uh, they're not able to come to you and tell you if they've been touched or somebody's hurting them or they're being mean to them. You know, I've even seen where mothers allow their boyfriends to belittle their children and that really disgusts me. Um, when you're dating somebody, they should not meet your child. I don't care how much you're attracted to them. I don't care how much you're comfortable with them. It is not for the children yet. That should be at least two years minimum. At least. Because if they cannot speak, if they can talk and, and they can come to you and they're educated about bad touch and good touch, then great. Then six months to a year. But if they're not speaking and being able to literally come to you like mommy I'm being touched or mommy this person's being mean to me or mommy he's not being nice to me they don't need to be around your children if you have a child with a disability most definitely don't have them around your child because most pe people aren't always good people and I don't know why people have to be told this your not being a responsible parent if you're bringing some stranger around your child. You don't know if you're even ready for them. Like, you're in this new relationship. And, of course, you're going to be in, uh, you're going to have that new love feeling. Doesn't mean your child needs to be involved with that at all. You know, <sighs> I am not perfect by any means. Like, literally, when my son was little, I started dating. I didn't bring him around right immediately. It took a few months. But the whole relationship itself only lasted six months. But as soon as he showed his true colors, I most definitely left him. But most women won't do that. They'll be like, oh, I think I can change them. Or they'll just keep sticking by them because they think, oh, it's just a bad day. They'll make excuses and make excuses. Well, your child doesn't need those excuses. You know, my biggest, the guy that I had brought my son around, he was 18 and I was 20. He had been in a facility to help rehabilitate him because he had been molested and he was molesting other children. Well, they wanted to make sure that he did not do that outside of himself when he got older. I knew about the molestation, he told me what happened. I was also molested. Children need to be forgiven. Children need to give, you need to be able to believe that they can be rehabilitated. And I believe that he was rehabilitated. And my son loved him. I didn't leave him because he hurt my son. I left him because he hurt me and he was on drugs. Once you put your hands on me, I'm done. And Again, the whole relationship only lasted six months. Like, and I was, I had a broken heart. I met this guy when I had a broken heart and I was just going through the motions. I didn't, I felt something for him, but I wasn't in love with him. I loved our time together. I loved how he was attentive to my needs and he played with my son and he, you know, he still had the childlike, um, mentality with my son and you'd get down and he'd play cards with him and took him to the park all the time he really was trying to be an active father he just had a bad temperament and he was on drugs which he had both and I was done like I'm not going to put myself or my child in any circumstances children don't know when somebody's bad for them that's where you're the adult and you're supposed to know that and knowing somebody for a month or so is not knowing somebody. You do not know them. You still have not seen their temperament. You still have not, uh, I don't even know. Like, dating is only between the adults. Don't bring the children into it. 
Especially when you're not even knowing this person. It'd be different if they were like a, a friend that you've known for years and then you decided you were going to start dating because you, you know, separated with the father or whatever. But still, you need to be cautious. You still don't know this person. You just know that this person, you're attracted to this person or you have, you're like-minded with this person. You don't bring your children into this. You especially, no, not at least for six months to a year. Don't bring them around your children. If you cannot find somebody to watch your child while you go out on dates, then, well, you don't need to really be with anybody until that child can speak and be able to let them know if anything is going on. If they're not uncomfortable, if they're uncomfortable with that, that person, if he's hurting that person, you want your child to be able to express anything that is going on. And if they're not able to, then no, no, you know. I learned from that one experience and I never brought my child around another person I dated. Literally, I never, I didn't even really date. So he did not meet anybody that I was involved with. My son, it was always just me and my son. I focused on just me and my son. Especially if you're still heartbroken of the father and you're, you need to heal from that shit before you start bringing in somebody else. And that's just truly my, my opinion. Because why are you trying to move forward when you're not even healed. You're just going to take the same garbage from that relationship and bring it into the new one. You know, children, they have their own personalities. You know, this is what I wrote. It doesn't take a child time to build a relationship. They build a relationship the very first moment that they are introduced to someone. Children have no concept of time, so one day could feel like weeks for them. They don't, they do not understand somebody that you just introduced to them is somebody that may be temporary. They just know they built a bond, they made a connection, and they love the person. You know, what hurt me the most out of that relationship is, you know, when I left my ex husband, my son's first one, please, mommy, please, mommy, don't take another daddy from me. And it broke my heart. I was like, oh my God, you know, he's not your daddy. I had to literally tell him, I said, he's not your daddy, baby. Your daddy is da your daddy. He's always going to be your daddy. Mommy's never going to take him away from you. But this man was not your daddy. You know, you can't go back and change things. You can only make things better. Children don't have their own little perspective of who the adult you placed in their life. They are trusting you to protect them. Children love someone at first sight. They are innocent, pure. They forgive quickly and love everyone. They cannot identify who should stay in their life and who shouldn't. They love at first sight. They are not like adults. They have, haven't been hurt to the core to have that sort of judgment. Children are still close to God image and forgive quickly. Children are different beings altogether. No parent should be introducing their children to another lover they just met. Single parents who have physical custody of their children and are ready to date again after the two parents break up must be responsible. Remember, they are meant to protect their children. When you are acutely dating, when you are actually dating and not just messing around with someone, your child still shouldn't meet the person until you truly have a good handle on their personality, their character. They are morally responsible and not going to hurt their your child. A single parent who brings their new lover around their children is hurting them more than protecting them. You shouldn't be bringing your children around this new person for at least six months to a year. You and your lover are getting to know each other. You need to learn your new lover's behavior, manners, morals, and most importantly, character of the person. Your children don't need to be around this person until you know they are worthy of your child's love. Two people dating, you need to focus on getting to know each other and what you want and expect from the relationship. You don't rush anyone into your children's lives. Life after the very beginning of a relationship can hurt the child 
emotionally because they don't understand if this person shows their true colors, meaning they are drug addicts, alcoholics, physically abusive, some of unethical behavior, and you decide you don't want to be with them. They got attached and now they don't understand where this person went in their life. Your child is trusting their parent to make the best decisions for them. You need to use your mind and understand that everybody is not for you. There are racist people out there. There are people out there that will act like they love your child and be mean to them and hateful to them. you got to be more responsible and be able to pick up on that. Because trust me, somebody in my grandbaby's life like that, it's not going to happen. Mm. It's, un- again, I stress, if you have a child that is, um, they're, Speech is developing slowly and they're not able to communicate well with you. You most definitely don't need to bring them around your child. You know, I hate that things are unfolding the way it is with my family right now. But I'm proud of my son for stepping up and wanting to protect his child. You know, him and his wife are not going are separated now and they're going through a divorce and I'm very sad about it. And, you know, you know, people don't understand. I'd rather see a a father participating in his son's life and protecting him than just walking away and giving up. You know, that's what his father did pretty much. He just gave up. Uh, He did. It was like, since he couldn't have me anymore, he just wasn't going to participate. Well, I didn't let him do that because I'm like, no, he's your child and he loves you. Doesn't matter what I have anymore, but he needs you. He needs a father, you know, and his father had women in and out of his life, but I was right there in the middle of it. Like literally I met that woman. I approved of them or I didn't approve them. They either way they knew I didn't approve of them or I did approve of them. Um, and you know, when his, 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 uh, father got remarried, I actually kept her children with my children so that my son would get comfortable with her kids because he didn't like sharing his daddy. It was his dad. He didn't understand. She had two little ones, small, younger than him. You know, I learned the hard way how it affects a child. You need to put your child's, your child emotions and how they feel in perspective. And since they can't tell you how they feel, you need to be more responsible. I cried lots of nights. You know, I hated seeing my son upset and I hated seeing him heartbroken over his daddy. He's like, that's my daddy. That's my daddy. And I told him, I said, I understand it's your daddy. And, but you have to share your daddy. You know, he's got a new family and that's exactly... uh, I had to say that he's got a new family because, you know, he only knew this woman two weeks and got freaking married to him. I I really didn't want to do nothing. But what do you do? I mean, I couldn't take him, his father away from him. And I was so angry that he was being irresponsible. But my son was able to talk. My son knew good touch, bad touch. And I always made sure he understood good touch, bad touch. And I even got up in that woman's face. You will not sleep in the same bed with my son. It's my son. And if he wants to sleep with his daddy, you need to go on the couch. I don't care. You are not to be around my son until I'm comfortable. Which I was never comfortable. But, you know, kids are kids. And although he wasn't even with her very long anyways. But that's a different story. You got to be mindful of your children's emotions. You got to be a emo- you have to be involved. They're little people. They love, they don't care. They're doing their best to learn from the parents and of course he had two people. His stepmom and his dad were They were very selfish. Like I said, she had two children, younger. Paul Allen was two. Cameron was two. But Paul was a little younger. And then she had a baby. And he really, Cameron loved the baby. He just didn't like Paul Allen, which was a boy. And he didn't like that. And he would try to be mean to Paul Allen. You got to understand, little ones still act out. 
And since they don't have all the words to say, they will act out physically and emotionally. And right now, you need to be focusing on raising a child that can that can address their emotions. And if you don't give them a positive way to do it, they will do it in other ways that are not healthy and is not good. And they will carry that up until they adult. You know, I understand adults have needs. But you still can't rush a relationship just because you want to be in it or you think this is the one or I don't know. But you still have to be responsible to the little ones. You know, we're not living in a society where everybody loves each other and is helping one another and good to one another. And, you know, I want people to understand that there are people out there that really can hurt your children and you can't take that pain away from them. That is their pain and they understand it and now they're grieving and now they're hurt and you know they're going through change just like you're going through change. You just left a marriage. You know, my son was too little to process that stuff. You know, I mean, we literally broke up when he was a baby like and I kept trying to work it out with his father. You know, and then once I realized, you know, he really wasn't trying to salvage our relationship. He was, it was easier for him to move on and let go than actually fix himself and be a good father and be the man I needed him to be. So I just let him go. Did it hurt? Yes. Did it hurt my son? Yes. But I still made him be an active father. Was he participating all the time? No. But you can't make a man be a father. He has to want to be a father. He didn't even try to understand how to be a father. But you have to take... Please... Be more mindful of your children's feelings. Be mindful of their what their needs are. Not your own needs. They need you as a parent right now. You can wait three or four years to start over. If it's such a real relationship, wait until he's able to communicate. Wait until they're able to literally be able to say, communicate if they like this person, if they don't like this person, if they don't want this person around. That's really all I have to say. You know, I, I am not a perfect parent. Like I said, but I taught my child good touch, bad touch. I wanted to make sure if my child liked somebody or if they didn't like my child, I listened to them. It's just like when he went started going to school. If he didn't like going to school, we went and chose a different school. I listened to, I gave my child a voice. And that voice is necessary to protect them. And I highly will remember that guy because I came up in a, a a generation where you were seen but you weren't heard. To me, that is just evil. I should be seen and I should be heard. And, you know, I raised my son. He was seen, he was heard, and he most definitely had an opinion. If he didn't, if he expressed it, I listened to it, I would process it, and then I would make a decision. I listened to my child. Your children are your next generation. You need to be raising them to be the best version of themselves. You need to help them process emotions. You need to help them process what they want, what their needs are. Not worrying about your needs. You brought a child into this world. Now listen to that child. Be there for that child. Raise that child. If you don't want that child, then maybe you should sign, do it, sign them over to somebody else who does want that child and who will be attentive to that child and understand that that child has needs that need to be met and yours are not that important. I will always believe firmly that children always come first. They will always come first. You know, that was one of the biggest things about Matt. He was so jealous of Cameron because he got more attention. He's a child. You know, that is what children, they need your attention. They're trying to grow up. They're, you're cultivating their personality. You're helping them. You're nurturing them. You're making sure that they feel validated and they know that they're loved. Uh, 
that's really all I really want to say. It's I hate that people don't understand that they don't know people at all times. Like, you know, I told somebody the other day, it's not your enemies you have to worry about. It's the people closest to you that hurt you. And they do. My father was my favorite person. And when he molested me, it broke my heart. But I had been touched by so many other people my whole life. It just felt normal. I had normalized it. Like, oh, well, his best friend tried to touch me. Asked me to touch him. You know, people aren't always mean about touching you. They'll do it in... Or, you know, we teach our kids, if somebody touches you without your permission, no, don't say that shit, because, no, a child shouldn't give them permission to, oh, yeah, go ahead and touch me. Don't teach them that. If it, You need to teach them if a person asks you, can I touch you? No. That's my part. That's, those are mine. I don't want you touching me. And then teach them to tell you who asked that. Because they need to be educated that that is their body. It's their precious body. You don't want them to be scared as they get older to share their body with somebody. But you want to make sure that they understand when they share, it's their choice. It's their choice to share their body. It's not anyone's choice to ask for permission to be touched. Such a brainwash. Ask for, no. Every person that ever touched me, oh, they asked for permission, all right. My dad did it while I was sleeping. But at the ball field, they touched me. They didn't ask for permission. I'm trying to keep together. You don't understand how evil people are out there. They are evil. And they will look you in the face and like they did nothing wrong when they exploited your child. My dad's best friend wanted me to touch his penis for a popsicle. A popsicle. It was my dad's best friend. Told my dad. It wasn't his best friend no more. You don't know how evil it is out there. And you know, I'm going to bring people into your, your children's lives. You need to be educated. But just because they're not hurting your child, they're still making them feel dirty inside. They're still disvaluing them. There's still more to your child's character than just them. Don't let people manipulate them. Yeah, I didn't get hurt, but I felt dirty inside. And I felt like if you didn't love me, if you weren't touching me, you didn't love me. You know how hard that is to unprogram? I'm still trying to get that one. You have no idea what it's like to be exploited your whole life. I'm still trying to heal from that. Still trying. Please love your children. Hold them dearly. Don't make mistakes that you can't undo. Because you can't take that pain away. I always identified in my father as a monster. I had a father and I had a monster side. The monster side was the alcoholic. The father was the sober one. I love you all. I thank you for listening to me. Please understand that you'd rather have a loving parent that protects you and does their best by teaching you. It's better to be taught than have experience of it because although my experience allows me to watch and learn what I don't want in my life, it's still hard to process sometimes 
Am I just being overreacted and overthinking it? But I'd rather just walk away still. I don't care. But inside, I do care. I care too goddamn much. I love y'all. Have a good evening. Thank you for watching.